If your organization was performing trap neuter return or TNR before COVID-19 hit, you might fear that the progress you've made will disappear when spay neuter services shut down. Well, fear not. Drawing from our modeling work, the Alliance for Contraception in Cats and Dogs, or ACCND, will show you that your work to date will serve you well during a sterilization shutdown. So to all our intrepid TNR friends, this video is for you. So many have worked tirelessly for many years to manage community cat populations humanely. When asked to stop sterilizing cats during the pandemic, that spay gap can be really difficult to accept. And of course, reducing community cat populations requires more than sterilization. You work hard to prevent abandonment and find adoptive homes when possible, but you may feel that for each day of the shutdown, you lose progress. However, this is temporary and we will regain lost ground. Although sterilization work has paused, its effect is living on, creating a positive impact that will make catching up far more doable. For everyone investing in humane cat population management should be thanked. In this video, we'll illustrate the cat population dynamics of TNR and then show you some computer modeling specifically addressing the COVID-19 spay gap for different levels of TNR and how to get back on track. I think you'll be encouraged by what you see. Okay, so first some cat population dynamics. Here's a hypothetical population of cats. It's at what we call the carrying capacity in this community. That means there are the highest number of cats that can be supported by available food and other resources. This is the point at which TNR just began. Our modeling work uses a population of 50 cats, but because that's a lot of cats on the screen, we'll demonstrate our modeling results with half that number. Like in real life, about half are female. You are aiming to sterilize as many cats as possible, and you reach 75% of them in your first campaign. A few evade the intervention and are still able to breed and have kittens. While we also neuter males, we are just showing the impact on females to keep this illustration simpler. Some of the kittens survive to adulthood, replacing adults that die. Meanwhile, cats and kittens are also abandoned and some immigrate from another colony. This is what the population looks like after two years of high intensity sterilization. Every six months, you sterilized 75% of the fertile cats, and the number of cats is below the carrying capacity. But because of abandonment and immigration, a small number of fertile females and males remain. So what happens when COVID-19 hits and TNR suddenly stops for a period of time? Because a high percentage of the cats in the colony are sterile, fewer kittens are born. Population growth towards carrying capacity is limited because only a small proportion of the population can breed. 12 months into the COVID-19 spay gap, you only have a few fertile cats. The majority of those living in the colony are sterilized. TNR has made your colony better prepared for a gap in services due to COVID-19 because of the number of cats that cannot breed. So, although helping your community cope with this global pandemic was not top of mind when you planned TNR work, that's exactly what you've achieved. Okay, now let's shift to computer simulation modeling done by a team organized by ACCND. ACCND's primary focus is to advance new methods of non-surgical fertility control for cats and dogs. We began this modeling as we've looked at possible long-term contraceptives for cats and to learn how they might offer value to TNR work. We learned that our computer modeling is also really important to making the best use of traditional TNR with surgery for cats. The modeling project was partially funded by the ASPCA and the team here includes experts on the existing data on free roaming cats, on computer modeling, and in wildlife population management where computer modeling is done a lot. The modeling uses a sophisticated modeling software called Vortex and it compares TNR-based approaches and removal-based approaches on things like 
population reduction, preventable cat deaths, and more. For more details, see our publications done prior to COVID-19. We're working on another manuscript now in which we add in costs and economics. On to COVID-19 specific modeling. Now we've used the model to look at what happens when a sterilization gap for COVID-19 hits. We assume you lose an entire year before you can return to spay-neuter work. The investment you've made to date will certainly help you moving forward. We'll look at scenarios at two different intensities managing cats, one we call high, one we call low. Here's the first scenario. Again, you start, pre-COVID that is, with 50 cats in the colony, about half female. At the start, none are sterilized. This graph shows just the number of fertile females vertically and the year on the horizontal axes. For two years, you sterilize 75% of all fertile cats every six months. We call that high-level intensity TNR. And of course, our model lets fertile cats have kittens and allows for abandonment and immigration, so the original cats aren't your only worry. The blue line shows progress over 10 years. Now you're looking at those one-year spay gaps. You can see the blue baseline better here. The green line shows you that you've worked diligently with this colony for two years and then shut down for a year. If you follow the red line, you see what happens if you were five years into TNR with your population before that one year shutdown. As you can see, across both scenarios, the COVID-19 induced sterilization gap adds very few cats over the 12 months of no activity, and then you catch back up. So what does the entire population of your colony look like? In this graph, the line shows the number of cats in your colony starting at 50 and declining over time. The blue line shows what happens when you sterilize 75% of fertile females every six months, each year for 10 years. The green and red lines show what happens when there's a COVID one-year gap in your program. The colony stabilizes at about half the size over time with a balance between sterilized resident cats and the influx of new cats that joined the colony. For both early and late TNR gaps before that, that stabilization, you can see the impact on overall abundance is minimal as these lines barely diverge. You may be saying, well, we're not sure how many cats we had when we started, or we didn't sterilize that high a percent, especially at the beginning. Well, maybe you can relate better to this next example. In this colony, caretakers have done what they could and sterilized 25% of fertile females every six months. The blue line shows the reduction in fertile females. Like before, the green line shows the impact of a one-year shutdown after completing the second year of TNR. The red line shows the same happening after your fifth year. As you can see here, the rebound effect is somewhat more substantial in each case. If you've been at it longer, you are working with fewer fertile females, but it still takes four more years to catch up. In this scenario, the total reduction in colony population is noticeably less than in the 75% scenario, even without the gap. At this lower level of intervention, both lines for scenarios with gaps don't quite catch up with the original program till after the period on this graph. However, you don't lose all the progress you've made because there's been a one-year gap in TNR, so that's good news. Notably, we also learned that the high-intensity 75% approach costs only a tiny bit more, 3%, than the low-intensity 25% approach. This is because with 25% each six months, you end up sterilizing about the same total number of cats. So the cost is the same in the end. Perhaps you've been doing low intensity TNR, or you feel like the colonies you focus on are operating well under carrying capacity, and there may be more headroom for kittens born now to, to survive as you'd hope they would. 
For these reasons and more, ACCND has recommended the consideration of megestrol acetate, or MA, for short-term use to prevent estrus and pregnancy in female cats. MA is an oral contraceptive mixed into food once a week for up to 30 weeks. This drug needs a veterinary prescription and is available from compounding agencies. It won't be appropriate in many colony situations, but you can explore it if it makes sense for your situation for materials on our website. Before we sum up, just a few caveats about computer modeling. Because models attempt to mimic complex systems, simulation models are imperfect predictors of absolute outcomes. And different free-roaming cat populations may be defined by different demographic data. That said, modeling can be tremendously useful for illustrating trends and relative comparisons in the real world. And now to conclude, here are the key takeaways from this modeling work. The ground you lost can be made up again. Free-roaming cat colonies with high sterilization rates tolerate a one-year gap rather well. When fewer cats are sterilized, more kittens are born more and fewer die due to more high mortality rates. So a colony of sterilized cats helps minimize the suffering that comes with population turnover. When restarting your program, you get more impact for your dollar with high intensity TNR and front-loading your efforts. This is especially true if you focus on females. And it won't cost you more in the end. There are additional resources on ACCND's website, including a guide for how to count cats, to design and implement an outdoor cat monitoring program. You can find out more about ACCND's recommendation of a temporary oral contraceptive for well-monitored female cats only during the surgery shutdown. These links are also available in the description of this video. We acknowledge the ICAM Coalition and ACCND Board Chair Dr. Ellie Hibby for this presentation's animation concept and also Dr. Phil Miller for Vortex Modeling to illustrate the impact of a sterilization gap. Any questions? Please reach out. Best of luck to you in your animal welfare efforts, both during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond.